Hello everyone, this is model shipwright Steve Prisky. I wanted to share with folks one of my favorite clipper ship models I've built, the Extreme Clipper Raven, circa 1851. This model was commissioned by the Pasadena Maritime Museum for display in their main room. The model was scratch built in about 1,200 hours. It is double plank on bulkhead. The model measures four feet long from the tip of the bowsprit to the tip of the spanker boom. In the case, she's just under five feet long and two and a half feet tall. The model is mounted to an Oregon Myrtlewood heavy plank and displayed over a five foot mirror. It was decided the model would be built of exotic woods and not painted. Thus, on the starboard side, I place a light colored strake where the water line would have been. Clipper Raven wasn't the largest square rigger built for the East India and West Coast trade, but she was a super fast ship. Here from the model's brass plaque. An extreme clipper, Raven was launched on July 1st of 1851. She measured 158 feet long on the keel and weighed 711 tons. A first class clipper, the Raven was considered a little beauty and proved to be a very fast sailor, often besting such rivals as the Sea Witch, Hurricane and Clipper Comet. Now at this time in the mid 1800s and the pinnacle of the clipper ship era, with several records in the books, the clipper ship Sea Witch was considered the fastest ship afloat. However, on the Raven's maiden voyage, she managed to beat both the Sea Witch and the usually dominant clipper Typhoon from the East Coast to San Francisco. Here's that story. The following images were gleaned from the internet and do not necessarily represent the ships in the story. One of the best ocean races of 1851 was between the Raven, the Typhoon, and the Sea Witch. These clippers sailed for San Francisco nearly together. The Sea Witch passed out of Sandy Hook on August 1st, followed by the Typhoon on August 4th, while the Raven left Boston on August 6th. All had able commanders who carried Murray's wind and currents chart to assist them. In this month of light and baffling breezes, a quick run to the equator was hardly to be expected, but these clippers threaded their way across the quick calm belt of cancer, ran down the northeast trades, and drifted through the doldrums with surprising speed. The Sea Witch still kept her lead at the equator, crossing on August 30th, closely followed by the Raven and the Typhoon, which crossed together on the 31st so that the Raven had gained four days and the Typhoon two days on their swift competitor. They all weathered Cape St. Rogue and stood away to the southward for the splendid dash over the 3,000 miles through the southwest trades and the strong westerly winds further south, all crossing the parallel 50 degrees south and the same latitude 64. The Raven had gained another day on the Sea Witch and these two clippers were now side by side, the typhoon only two days astern. Here began one of the keenest races ever sailed upon the ocean. On this desolate ocean, the clippers raced from horizon to horizon in heavy westerly gales and a long fierce sweeping sea. For 14 exciting days and nights, with single and double reef topsails, the Sea Witch and Raven were having it out, tack for tack sometimes one and then the other gaining the advantage. The Typhoon, in hot pursuit, was pressing the two leaders and slowly closing upon them, for her greater length and power helped her here. Finally, the Sea Witch and Raven emerged from this desperate contest side by side just as they had entered it, crossing the latitude 50 south in the Pacific in 14 days from the same parallel in the Atlantic. The Typhoon had now gained another day and was with 24 hours sail of each. Clear of Cape Horn, they all went away fast to the northward, rushing through the southeast trades and with studding sails, sky sails, and ring tails, every yard of canvas set that would draw. On this stretch to the equator, the Sea Witch fairly flew through the water and crossed in 22 days, leading the Raven two and the Typhoon four days. They now stood to the northward, close hauled on the starboard tack for their final struggle. 
Here again, length and power counted in favor of the Typhoon, and she came up with the Sea Witch and Raven, leading them both into port. The Raven, too, for the first time, fairly headed the Sea Witch. The Typhoon glided through the Golden Gate November 18th, 106 days from Sandy Hook. The Raven, November 19th, 105 days from Boston. And the Sea Witch, November 20th, 110 days from Sandy Hook. So as you can see, the Clipper Raven was a pretty fast clipper ship, even though she wasn't the largest ship in her day. Here are some photographs of me building the model Raven. Uh, she's a double plank on bulkhead. There's the first layer of planking. And here's the second layer of planking being applied. Since the model wasn't going to be painted, I've used uh, some exotic woods on the outer planking, such as teak wood, uh, tanganyika wood, and some other exotic uh, African woods. The uh, deck, deck planks are all rope cocked, just like on the real ship. And here I'm checking the alignment of the mast holes. I use a laser device to ensure that I get those straight down the middle. <laughs> and uh, here's doing some more of the details on the uh, bow of the Clipper Raven. Um, when I first started building ship models, of course, I would follow the plans and rules uh, that were laid out uh, in kits. But when you're scratch building a model and you uh, uh, I've done quite a few of them. I tend to build things out of sequence, uh, not necessarily uh, from the ground up, just like uh, uh, the ship was built on the ways. This is sort of interesting, if not amusing. I had already started installing the masts and doing some of the rigging when it was time to stain the hull, so I had to hang the model from the ceiling for a couple of weeks and uh, put on uh, three, four layers of, of uh, Danish teakwood oil. Here's some of the deck details. I used a lot of brass, of course, in building this ship model, and I also built out the below decks, which is something I do on most of my ship models. My favorite part about building square riggers is doing the rigging. It's, it's so enthralling to uh, uh, tie down the 110, 120 down lines, in addition to building all the standing rigging, the backstays and the ratlins. But uh, rigging a, a ship model is amazing. It's an exercise in engineering when you realize exactly uh, how these ships were both rigged and then operated. As I mentioned earlier, I like to mount my models to an Oregon Myrtle Wood base. Uh, the, no two of these, of course, are the same, and the intention is to select one that evokes a little bit of a sense of motion of water moving underneath the model. I also mount my models on a mirror so that the admirers or people viewing it can get another look, a different look. Uh, when looking down into the mirror, you see an awful lot of details that you otherwise might not see. And here's a uh, reverse shark fin on the tip of the bowsprit of the Clipper Raven. I always include a detailed brass plaque that explains the history of the ship model, as well as a little bit about the building of the model. Now this model uh, had to be shipped down to the Pasadena Maritime Museum, so following construction I also had to build a large shipping crate. Um, and I've figured out a way over the years to uh, secure these models so that they don't move around. And she arrived intact, thank goodness. Uh, here for the next uh, minute and a half I'll uh, just uh, play the music in the background and not say anything while uh, you get a chance to observe the uh, Clipper Raven photographed at Cape Arago Highway out of Coos Bay, Oregon. And now here's some final photographs showing the Clipper Raven in her home at the Pasadena Maritime Museum in the main display room. As mentioned before, she sits inside of an enclosed plexiglass case. It's just under five feet long and two and a half feet tall. 
and the ship itself is four feet long from the tip of the bowsprit to the tip of the spanker boom, mounted on a heavy Oregon Myrtlewood base and displayed over a five foot mirror. Thank you very much for watching How I Built the Clipper Raven circa 1851. This is Steve Prisky, Model Shipwright, signing off.